what is this expectation value? Okay, so here is, uh, let's see here, let me get to my cheater notes. Okay, so the, so once again, just in our notation, okay, when we do this symbol right here, that's expectation value of the operator in question, all right? And again, going on this example of maybe just supposing two states, so a superposition of two states, okay? So mathematically speaking, the expectation value will be the square average of those results, okay? Which is given by omega. Um, and so what this means now, this integral here is not unique to quantum mechanics. Uh, this is just a mathematical operation to carry out this average, okay? This, um, and it's it's not quite an arithmetic average like a mean, okay? It's an expectation value, which is just another way of doing statistical analysis. And because of this notion of superpositions, right, where we're just adding up a basis set, this is um, the appropriate statistical analysis on wave functions, not a mean function, like an arithmetic mean, but rather an expectation value function, okay? So I just want to walk you through what um, is going on in the math here. So psi n, that corresponds to a normalized wave function. So first the wave function has to be normalized, and we're going to play with this wave function that I've got going on right here. So recall we normalized this last time. Um, in our Friday session, and um, this is actually the wave function for ground state hydrogen atom, okay, so it's fairly realistic. Um, so psi n is a wave function. Remember, psi star n is the complex conjugate of a normalized wave function, all right? Um, we remember that, uh, so I'll put both of those there. We remember that d tau is r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi, okay? And so we also remember just in general, because these are eigenvalue equations, when I take the operator and operate on psi, I get back the eigenvalue multiplied by psi, okay? So if I uh, continue along here, we know that this is going to equal now psi star n, and so I'll replace this omega psi um, uppercase omega, so this is not a W, it's a lowercase omega, lowercase omega, which is the eigenvalue, and we know now that's a real number, okay? So I can replace that with lowercase omega psi n d tau, all right? And because we know omega is a real number and it's a constant, I can pull that out of the integrand, and so this goes now psi star n, psi n, d tau. And because these wave functions have been normalized, we know that now psi star psi d tau equals one, right? And so thus this whole thing just equals omega, the value we want to know, the expectation value which again, the expectation value is the average of a large number of observations, all right? So let's do um, a real example. So I'm gonna switch over to the Mathematica file, and this is definitely a part of what you're supposed to do in the Math 2 assignment, all right? So I'm gonna give away some of the answers, um, and I'm just gonna put that down here below, all right? And so what I also want is my, um, math assistant, so I'm going to use that just to make a nice looking, uh, you know, mathematical operation so we know what's happening. All right. And um, I'm also going to remind you that I can separate this r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi into its separate integrals. All right. So let's build that up. Um, so I'm going to say, um, let's see here. I think I can pick that one. Yes. And I'm going to pick this guy. And my, remember, r goes from 0 to um, infinity, okay? 
So I've already defined my wave function as, um, let's actually zoom in a little bit. Uh, there we go. So I've already defined my wave function as psi, oops, I'm going to back up because see, I defined it as psi sub n, so I know it would be uh, to remind myself that it's normalized. Oops. N, okay. And then bracket um, R comma. And uh, let's see, I'm going to put a value in for the bore radius. 52.9, because I want an actual value out of this thing. And of course, I could do this in terms of A, but just to show you that um, I can get a real number. And I'm even going to go ahead and put um, this in parentheses just to show you that we can do this as it's properly coded. I'm going to say escape, conj, escape, right? And that gives me psi star. That's going to give me the conjugate. Okay. Um, and so now, I'm just going to fill it out exactly like this math says. So if I want to know, for example, the expectation value of position, let me go back to writing over here, okay? So if I want to know position, I'm just going to say position, that's what I want to know. Then now my expectation value is going to be given by R. And so that means my operator is r hat, and that is just simply equal to r, okay? So that's all that that is. So I'm going to make my operator sandwich. So I'm going to say psi star r. And then now, um, oops, I'm going to put a space in there just so it knows it's multiplied. And then now escape, oops, uh, let's do that one. Escape psi escape n. And we know that's uh, as a function of r and the Bohr radius, 52.9, OK? And so let's see here. So now we've got that as psi r psi. And those are all of the dr functions, OK? But remember, I have to have the sine theta d theta d phi as well, all right? I can't forget that. So now I'm going to add in my second integral. And uh, just to make sure it knows that these are multiplied, yep, I said space. And then now that's zero to, um, I think it's two pi. I'm going to double check just so I do this correctly. Oh, zero to pi. I'm glad I checked. OK, escape pi, escape. And then now that's going to be sine of theta, OK, uh, oops, bracket, and then d theta, OK. And then now the final integral I need is for d phi. So I'm going to put that in there. And now this one is 0 to 2 pi, so 0 tab 2 space escape pi escape tab. And then now we just know that I'm just going to put it in this one because it's just one d phi, right? And escape phi escape. Okay. Lovely. And so now I've got all of those being multiplied together and cross your fingers. In principle now, I should be able to hit, um, let's see here. This one is not doing the, um, color that I want it to do. So let's just see what happens. No, because, OK, so what did you do wrong? So first, we're going to piecemeal this thing together. OK, I'm going to say Control X. And so now, uh, if I just integrate that, OK, good, I got a value there. OK, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say parentheses, parentheses. And now I'm going to say that's multiplied by um, 0 to 2 pi, and then sine theta bracket d theta. Okay, lovely. It took that. So, right, it's got the right color.
color there, and I'm just going to put another set of parentheses around that, and then we're going to say space, and then another set of parentheses, and then now um, 0, 2, pi, and we're just going to say 1 times, uh, let's see, d, oops, escape, phi, escape, and then in parentheses, and now, well, I should have gotten a result. So let's say here, evaluate notebook. Oh man, of course it's not working for me. I didn't do. R squared, sine theta, dr, d theta, d phi, geez louise. So you know what I forgot? Look, this is great that you're seeing me do this mistake in real time. Okay, so I'm going to... Um, up here, I'm going to remind you, right, that if I have now psi star times r times psi, right, that's my operator sandwich, psi star r psi. I also have that r squared. So that r squared has got to be there because that's a part of d tau. Aha, so what I need right here is a times r squared, and if we wanted to, because we know that just multiplication by r doesn't change order of operation, so that middle r, I could have called that r cubed. Cross your fingers. Nope, still not happy. So let's see, evaluate quick kernel, local. Yeah, do it all up. Um, okay, let's make sure my wave function looks okay to me up there, right? I define it as psi r and everything like that. Nope. Well, you guys, you'll have to trust me that it is supposed to work. So let me back out of here and just integrate this part. Okay, so I got a number. Fantastic. So that was supposed to be it. So I wonder if I did make a mistake with this right here. Zero to pi, because I just looked at my notes. <laughs> mistake in my notes. I am not editing it out. I'm not going to edit it out so you can see um, just how I handle mistakes myself. So let's just go back to these notes and let's see what I did here. Uh, where I introduced the spherical chords. Oh, geez, Harmon, here it is. Zero to pi, zero to two pi. So that what was going on. I forgot the R squared and I got those mixed up. Okay, I'm glad I recovered that and I apologize you had to watch me flub around and make mistakes. So going back now and picking up on um, what the big deal about all of this is and what it means, okay? 79.35 picometer becomes the expectation value. So when we look at psi squared and we find where that value is on this graph, um, it's not the highest point. That highest point is the most probable which is a particular type of statistical analysis, right? If we carried out the first derivative on this set equal to zero, we would get that maximum value, okay? But we're not dealing with most probable values oftentimes in quantum mechanics. We're dealing with expectation values because of this whole idea of superpositions, okay? So 79.35 puts us somewhere about right there on the graph, okay? And so what that means now, if I was making um, a large number of observations of this wave function, I'll draw it right here, okay? That would mean in some observations, we find it right there. In some observations, we find it right there. And we keep going and we keep going. And if we did this enough times, right, our expectation value would converge to that 79.35, okay? Um, so let's see here, I've been going